Regardless of how you feel about Bethesda RPGs, it's hard to dispute how much there is to do in Skyrim. So many different ways to play through the game. Archery, stealth, magic, swords, hammers, the list goes on and on. Of course, when you consider the fact that you're playing as a legendary hero who battles an almost primordial evil, there's one weapon that doesn't really fit in with all the rest. Can you beat Skyrim with only a fork? The first part of any Skyrim playthrough is waking up and realizing that you're riding towards your death. This is where things took a strange turn. There was something off. I just couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was. You might consider this bad, but I think otherwise. How often do you get to do barrel rolls in a wooden cart being pulled by a horse? Things settled down, we arrived in Helgen, and it was time to create my character. I chose an orc as my race because they're my preferred race. Yeah, that's right, I'm an orc supremacist. Don't like it? Tough shit. Also, they've got Berserker Rage, which will come in handy later on. The dragon arrived, I escaped to Helgen Keep, got my hands cut, and the game begins. Believe it or not, there are two kinds of forks in Skyrim, utensils and weapons. The utensil forks are relatively common, the weapon forks are not. And there's no way to know which is which until you pick it up and look at it in your inventory. But that's okay, because more important than forks is the bucket on the table. It will make a fine addition to my collection. Alright, let's real quickly go over a few things about this run. This is a fork-only playthrough, which means I can only attack enemies with a fork. That doesn't mean I can't wear armor, use shields to block an attack, or use spells to heal myself. An enemy must only be damaged by a fork. The only other way is if they set off a trap and damage themselves. But that's akin to an NPC running off a cliff, so it's not really something I have any control over. Back to the game, avoiding enemies in Helgen Keep wasn't all that difficult. I looted stuff, found another bucket, taunted a bear, realized bears are shockingly quick, escaped the cave, activated a stone, swam with the fishies, and was off to Riverwood. There I sold most of my stuff to the Riverwood trader, obviously kept my five buckets, and the search for a fork begins. According to the wiki, there are only a handful of weapon forks in the entire game, including the DLCs, one of which is near High Hrothgar, so that's where I was going. Normally, you would take the 17 steps to get up there, but I'm about as stubborn as a turtle, so I'm not going to take those steps. I'm going on a mountain climbing adventure. The initial journey to the base of the mountain was pretty easy. A little ways up the mountain, it started to rain, and nothing makes climbing a snowy mountain easier than freezing rain and lightning. I continued climbing, then I climbed some more. After successfully climbing for a few minutes, I rewarded myself with more climbing. About 10 minutes later, I arrived at High Hrothgar. The fork is located beyond the courtyard, and the front door is locked. Unfortunate. Luckily, I was just thinking about how cool it would be to go mountain climbing, so I took the easy path to the courtyard by going around the temple. Master Ernie didn't have much to say to me, but the fork is now closer to my possession than ever before. I watched a tutorial and discovered that it would be harder than I previously thought to get aforementioned utensil. I must pass the chilly breeze of mild discomfort, after which I would find my treasure beneath a wooden bridge. I avoided the wind by going up the mountain. Then I figured that if I was going that far up the mountain, I might as well see if I could talk to Parthenax early by reaching the throat of the world before you're supposed to. You can't, but I did make it to the throat after another 8 minutes or so of mountain climbing adventures. I wasn't going to leave without being respectful of the sacred snow on which I treaded. I left one of my most prized possessions, a bucket, at the throat of the world. I also left a broom up there because I didn't want my bucket to be lonely. From there, I descended down the mountain towards the bridge, which was surprisingly difficult to find. But I found it, used some magic to shield myself from a corrupt snowflake, dropped beneath the bridge, and finally, I found it. A weapon stowed away by the gods themselves for fear of its unholy power. One damage. Awesome. I also took the knife because separating a brother and sister felt wrong. You're probably wondering which is the boy and which is the girl. I won't give it away, but I will tell you this. The knife is a whore. With my weapon of mass destruction finally in hand, I was eager to put it to the test. I started with the bandits at White River Watch. And you know what? It could be worse. Actually, it couldn't because the fork does one fucking damage, but it only took about 20 swings to kill the first bandit. Then I got a sweet execution on the second. From there, I began advancing the game's story by entering Whiterun, selling some stuff, observing Adrian's interesting smithing technique, informed the Jarl of what happened at Helgen, got a mission from Faringar, the court wizard, 
and then I was off to find the Dragonstone. Can we just take a minute to acknowledge how good this game looks with a few mods? Just wonderful. I made a mess of a few bandits, upped my armor rating to 96, got into a scuffle with a scavenger, and then I decided that the shield was making things too easy. From now on, no shield, only fork. The bandits guarding Bleak Falls Barrow proved to be laughably disposable, as did their friends inside. Also, if you're wondering why you can't see my fork, it's because Bethesda can't do anything right. It's visible in first person, just not in third person at the moment. This is a bug that occurs throughout this run. A bandit outlaw was the first enemy that took a considerable amount of time to kill. He hit like a dead baby, but could take a stern poke with a fork better than expected. I progressed further into the mine, discovered that kitchen utensils suck at clearing out spider webs, used Berserker Rage for the first time to kill a giant spider, then quickly killed Arval the Swift to recover the Golden Claw. Further into the dungeon, I encountered the Draugr for the first time, used a trap to kill a few of them who were being especially annoying, and eventually came face to face with the Draugr Overlord. I used Berserker Rage again to kill the Overlord, recovered the Dragonstone, returned to Farangar, the court wizard, and received word of a dragon attack. All things considered, this dragon fight was lackluster. I did get an execution on it, but my fork was invisible, so it might as well have not happened at all. The Jarl gave me a donkey. I refused her company because, look at her, she's just the worst in every way imaginable. My previous adventures came in handy as I fast traveled up to High Hrothgar to meet with the Greybeards, who nicely opened the door for me this time. In order to proceed, you must use a shout on Angelica. No way around it that I could find, unless you wanted to do some big, speed-running skips, but that would largely defeat the purpose of this playthrough. So I screamed at the old man and got him all randy. Master Ernie granted me his knowledge of a word of power. Master Boris had me shoot my shout at a few T-Series fans. I went outside and nearly took off Boris's head when I bashed him with my fork, ran through a gate that was rudely closed after I'd opened it earlier, and went back to the throat of the world to check out my bucket. Still perfect. While I was up there, I decided to head to the real top of the world. Up there, I found a neato pickaxe, mined some rock, and when I tried to pull out my fork, the game crashed. Too much power, I suspect. I reopened the game and went to find the horn of Jurgen Winkaller. The crash fixed my invisible fork problem, so it wasn't a total loss. On my way to Ustengrav, I encountered a dragon and poked him as hard as I could with my fork. Didn't do much. The dragon followed me all the way to Ustengrav from the Sky Altar. Inside Ustengrav, I contracted a few STDs, probably from the fake wolf that someone had, went back to Whiterun to heal myself, roughed up a few cultists, and decided that I would stuff all my important items up inside one of the cultist corpses for safekeeping, went back to Ustengrav, and discovered that a very special someone had stolen the... whistle? What is it? Horn. A horn, that's right. As punishment for stealing the horn, I stole all the buckets from the sleeping giant inn. I also stole most of their food and their cups, and sold them to the golden boy in Riverwood Trader. Then I returned the horn, was surrounded by old men in bathrobes who could certainly overpower me if they were so inclined, accidentally fell down a waterfall and died, robbed a giant, poked him with my fork, and watched him launch a wolf to the fucking moon. I timed it. That wolf was in the sky for over 12 seconds. Just goes to show you should never judge a man by the number of buckets he has. Some red bitch started whacking me with her hammer, so I stuck my fork in her spine. This weather mod I have installed is really cool. Look at this rain! And just like that, I'm a mod reviewer. I'd put tits in this video's thumbnail, but I actually have some self-respect. At the dragon burial site, I was violently shoved out of the way by a skeleton being born. I poked it to death, questioned Delfino, and prepared to travel to the Thalmor's party. To really prepare though, I had to explore a dark and mysterious force that few understand. I enchanted my fork with fire damage. It now does a staggering two points of burn damage. I have successfully taken an ordinary kitchen utensil and turned it into the most valuable fork in the known universe. No one man should have all this power, but I am no mortal man because I sexually identify as a big rock being thrown into the ocean, and that's a fact. Unfortunately, I used about half of my fork's charge on the way to Solitude. Then I gave my fork, armor, a few potions, and my eleven buckets to Malborn, donned my party outfit, traveled to the Thalmor Embassy, did the classic party prank of dropping a pie on someone's head and stealing all the food. Then I spoke to Malborn again, got my items back, most importantly my buckets, 
burned a few elves, stole a few notebooks, broke into the dungeons, killed their prisoner, escaped, returned to Delfino's hole, got the rest of my stuff back, and was off to Riften to find Esbern. In Riften, I did a job for Brenyolf that involved stealing a ring and planting it on someone else. But there was an innocent bucket just sitting there, out in the open, and I couldn't let it suffer in silence. So I stole that bucket before planting a ring and heading down into the Ratway. Hugh and Skeeverfucker proved a formidable opponent, tougher than some of the dragons I've fought, but all fall before the might of the fork. Further into the Ratway, I passed through the Thieves' Guild headquarters, stole their buckets, accidentally lit a deaf chick on fire before I killed her, and reloaded a save because a torch is not a fork. And then, uh, something a little strange happened. A bug of sorts. When I reloaded the quick save, the game placed me inside Esburn's house. And then it happened again after I reloaded a normal save. It didn't change anything, but I did get to see Esburn unlock his door. Kinda neat, I guess. Then I escorted Esburn to Riverwood and listened to his and Delfino's plan. If you're wondering what happened to all of Delfino's stuff, I stole it a while ago. The plan was to go to Sky Temple to learn about something. On the way there, I was attacked by a dragon, which was bullshit because I was standing in a very large puddle. His fire should have been ineffective. Whatever. I ran, and ran, and ran, and killed the death puppy, ran some more, killed all the draugr in a cave because someone said I couldn't, ran even more after that, ignored all the unpleasantness going on at Karthspire, entered the mine, did a puzzle, tried to slit my wrist and failed miserably, and entered Sky Haven Temple. In the temple, I found some awesome blades armor and a couple blade swords to sell. A unique sword that does 20 extra damage to dragons that unfortunately can't be disenchanted and applied to my fork. And I also found a set of samurai armor, but it's from a mod. So despite it looking great, I left it because it would have felt like cheating to me. With sadness in my heart, I returned to Angie looking for a shoulder to cry on, but only found a mean old man. Luckily, Master Boring spoke up and reminded Armando of what his position is, to serve me. So we went outside, I learned a new word that would allow me to finally kick my grandmother's ass in Scrabble, fast traveled up to the throat of the world, spoke to Parthenax, and ran into an issue. The dragon wants me to blow fire on his face. Problem is, that does damage. I'm sure you know what my first thought was. For the briefest of moments, I contemplated offering up my buckets as a sign of goodwill, but there are some things that even I won't do. Instead, I decided to fight Parthenax to the death with my fork. And you know what? After about 10 minutes of furious poking, I did it. Well, I almost did it. Turns out you can't kill him at the moment, so I was forced to blast him with fire. From there, I had to travel to the College of Winterhold to learn the location of an Elder Scroll. Along the way, I paid a thousand gold for the son of Stupid the Horse. For some reason, I assumed that Stupid the Horse V2 could fly. Bad decision on my part. I arrived at the college, spoke to Ugo, and after an unfortunate fall, the son of Stupid the Horse died from his injuries. Rest in peace, buddy. You couldn't fly, so I guess you were pretty much worthless. Good riddance. I didn't bury him. Instead, I left him to freeze in a rock, killed a few seals, talked to Septimus Sickness, sold stuff, stole a few more buckets, discovered Alfton, and decided it was time to take things to the next level. I ventured to an orc stronghold, then passed through the stronghold to a smithery where things are smithed and whatnot. Legend has it that on a table near the forge is another fork that can be wielded as a weapon. Just imagine it, dual wielding forks! Don't believe everything you read on the internet, kids. Because that turned out to be a lie. It was an eating fork, not a fighting fork. Todd Howard, even in death, you found a way to fuck me. After that letdown, I went back to Alfton to enter the most boring place in Tamriel, Dwemer Ruins. The only redeeming quality is that the spider workers have soul gems in them which are useful for refueling my fork. I'm not going to waste too much of your time with this because I wasted too much of my own. After I found the spanking machine, I took a monumental fall, parkoured my way down the giant hole, ignored the falmer because they're a real bitch to kill, let a dwarven centurion kill two tough cookies, upgraded to fucking absurd steel plate armor, pushed through jellyfish fields, got the Elder Scroll, trademark, returned the cube to Cygnus, had an up-close and personal chat with Parthenax, who not only landed on one of my buckets, but then he tried to fuck me with his head. Then I read the Elder Scroll at the time wound, watched the ancient heroes sing knowledge's power, and had to fight Alduin. At first, I tried to not use Dragonrend, because I couldn't remember if it did any damage. 
You can't fight Alduin in this situation without it. So I used it, along with Berserker Rage, Oak Flesh, and my Fork, to fight the mighty Son of Barney. I actually did more damage than you might think. Alright, so this is the epic fight for the future of Skyrim. I'm running up the clock, because there are some things coming up and this is about as good as it gets. Got your fill of dragon fighting? Great, let's move on. After Alduin fled, I convinced the Greybeards to hold a meeting between the Stormcloaks and the Imperial Cloaks. The meeting provided the Jarl of Whiterun with assurances he'd need to let me lure a dragon into downtown Whiterun. Once Uda Ving was captured, I gave him a few celebratory pokes with my fork. He did not like that, because after he was freed, he started attacking me. I reloaded a fork, rode to Skaldafin, and realized that I should have gotten all my cheese out of the cultist corpse before I left. Unlike last time, the big issue in Skaldafin was the Draugr. In my steel plate armor, I ran rather slow, which allowed them to follow me into the temple. A lot of them, actually. What I eventually had to do was strip myself down to my favorite cloth, run for my life to the south tower, and take the fight to the Draugr on my own terms. I killed enough of them that I could go back to the temple, solve a few puzzles, and make it outside without too much of an issue after that clusterfuck. Thankfully, after my last Skyrim video, I had about 140 billion people tell me that I could jump right into the portal to Sovngarde, and that's exactly what I did. Then I had to fight Sun. The only reason I beat him was because I had saved a level up, which allowed me to restore my health and increase it by 10 points. At this point, my one-handed weapon skill was at 39, and oh so close to 40. I had hoped that I could slice and dice Sun to increase it, but no, you can't. Before the heroes and I took the fight to Alduin, I raided the Hall of Heroes for buckets. They had none. I don't know how it can be some sort of heavenly afterlife without buckets. Maybe Alduin was hoarding them for himself. Doesn't matter now, because it's time for the final fight. Remember what I said not long ago about the first fight with Alduin being the real fight? I'll tell you why I said that. Because Alduin is a giant pussy. I hit him over and over again with Dragonrend, but he would not land. No matter what I did. I spent several minutes blasting him with it over and over again to no avail. If he can't land, I can't hit him with my fork. I thought, alright, if I can't kill him, I'll just let the other heroes do the work. I'll tell you now that that did not work, like, at all. It became clear very quickly that it would take decades for the arrow girl to kill Alduin, because she's the only one who can attack a dragon that won't land. After a while, I figured out that I could just stand there and my health would regenerate, thanks in part to my armor, faster than Alduin could attack. What I did was use console commands to speed up the game. This affects nothing but the speed at which things happen in the game. It doesn't give me extra health or anything like that. First I tried 3 times speed. Wasn't enough. Then 5 times speed. Wasn't enough. Then 8 times speed. Was not enough. Also, if you're wondering about the other commands you might see, TM removes all menus and HUD, I used that for a screenshot, and TFC1 freezes the game and gives you a free cam. Then I tried 15 times speed. Was. Not. Enough. I was getting pretty pissed off by this point, and I could tell that Sun was just done with the whole situation. And then the game froze. I guess after several months of fighting Alduin, the heroes fall and Alduin wins. I did what any rational person would do, short of doing shots of Drano. I opened the game again, ready to wait for hours if need be. You probably saw this coming a mile away. Reloading fixed the issue. Uh, Alduin landed, I beat him ruthlessly with my enchanted fork for a few minutes, he died, and I saved the day. And of course when he died, my one-handed skill finally leveled up to 40. Sun sent me back to Skyrim, the dragons did a dance or something, and I pretty much beat Skyrim with only a fork. According to the timestamps from in-game saves, the fight with Alduin took about 35 minutes. I don't know if I believe that, because I timed it and I spent about 5 minutes 30 seconds with the game at 8x speed, and 2 minutes 20 seconds with the game at 15x speed, which works out to about 78 minutes, assuming my math is right. During that time, Alduin's health never got below half, so my assumption is that the heroes can only do half of the work during that fight. But that's not what you're wondering about if you've made it this far. You want to know about the buckets. I'm extremely proud to say that I've collected 52 buckets, plus the one still at the top of the world, for a total of 53 buckets. But seeing isn't believing, so I will leave you with this wallpaper worthy shot of the hero of Skyrim, his mighty fork, and his collection of buckets.
And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Skyrim with only a fork. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.